Welcome back. We continue with our BVI chart briefing. If you missed parts one and two of this briefing, I strongly suggest you go to the links in the comments section below or to our YouTube channel and watch them. Parts one and two are full of useful information, so look for the trend to continue in this week's edition. All of us here at Proteus want your sailing holiday to be the best possible, and a good idea of where to go and what to do are invaluable in deciding how best to enjoy your vacation. So let's break it down and continue on our journey through the beautiful BVI. Whenever you decide to leave Anagata, the next day will be the longest sail of the entire trip in the BVI. The good news is, is that this is a predominantly either downwind or broad reach, and so it's very, very easy, it's quite fast, it's very pleasant, but you'll be coming down to Joost van Dijk. Joost van Dijk is another one of those magical places, and uh, it offers you a multiplicity of options. I'm going to show you two of the options on Joost van Dijk uh, when we do the uh, enhanced uh, sectional version of this chart briefing. We'll have far more detail for it to share with you about Joost van Dijk. We, in fact, we're going to devote an entire episode just to Joost van Dijk. So when you come down, you've got, uh, well, three distinct anchorages, but we're going to focus on two. The first one will be uh, Great Harbour, uh, which is where Foxy's Peace and Love is. Joost van Dijk has a population of a little over 200. Um, it's situated just to the east is Little Joost van Dijk, which is right here. Okay, but we're not even going to focus on that. Um, we're going to focus on Great Harbour. Great Harbour is uh, home of Foxy's, and when Foxy's is in residence, he's always available for a little color and a few of his humorous songs. The food is always good there. It's a barbecue type food. It's fantastic. And as with all the bars in the BVI, the drinks are well poured, so watch out for wobbly knees. I'm just going to zoom in on the, the harbor here so you can have a quick look at it. In Great Harbour, you will find a, pl a place to conveniently drop your garbage by the ferry dock. So right over here is the ferry dock. Um, you'll also find a bakery, customs clearance for those going in or coming from the USVI, a small grocery store, a, a homely little hotel sporting five rooms, and of course, Corsair's Beach and Bar Restaurant with good food, and sometimes uh, something for everyone. There are great memories to be made in Great Harbour, and some of which you can share, and some of which you can't. Next anchorage over is White Bay. Um, this is a day anchorage only, in my opinion. It's a very beautiful spot and is a good anchorage under normal conditions, but can be exposed and untenable in the winter. The holding is, is generally pretty good. There are two breaks in the reef, one here and one here. It's the only way to get in and out of the anchorage. Don't attempt any other way into the anchorage or you will be very, very embarrassed. Mm -hmm. Please also don't anchor or obstruct the entrance, either of them. Uh, consider how your boat will swing if there's a change in the wind or anything like that and whether or not you'll swing into the, the channel. Ashore is the place where the famous painkiller was invented, not at Pusses like Pusses would have you believe, and the soggy dollar is the spot. The nice thing about the Soggy Dollar is it's, it's a very sort of relaxed place. And once you've done some reasonable sampling of the painkillers, they've thoughtfully provided some hammocks for you to laze away the afternoon and, and basically recover. Uh, a little to the east of the Soggy Dollar is Ivan's Stress-Free Bar and Restaurant. I think the name says it all, and that's all you need to know. But it's good food and great drinks. Just remember your wobbly knees. Great Harbor will be the overnight anchorage, and White Bay will be a day anchorage. So the next morning, once you get up and leave Great Harbour, we're going to head over to Cane Garden Bay. Cane Garden Bay is actually the quintessential Caribbean beach. It's the long, thin, half-moon ribbon of white powdered sand set at the foot of heavily vegetated hills leading up to Great Sage Mountain. The shoreline all along here is absolutely peppered with beach bars, restaurants, and some small locally owned hotels. Cane Garden Bay is sort of a hybrid of bohemian artsy and a touristy beach. However, it's well worth a stop, and the anchorage has relatively good holding, as well as a good amount of mooring balls, each clearly marked with whom you should pay. The bay itself is subject to change depending on the wind direction and the mountain effects of the wind. So make sure if you're anchored how you'll swing. And also, we strongly suggest you to dive on the anchor to make sure that it is well set. The anchorage can become untenable with a more northerly ground swell, and we recommend skipping it under those conditions. 
I won't try to plug too many places in my chart briefing, but I highly, highly recommend Kito's Gazebo, especially when he's playing. And if you like his music, I also recommend Kito's album Paradise. He's got several albums, but Paradise is my favorite. Uh, another fun thing to do when you're um, in Cane Garden Bay is visit Cal Woods Distillery. I will expect some emails soon commenting on the rum. Top tip, eat before sampling. So this is a wonderful, wonderful spot. Uh, there is a multiplicity of beach bars, restaurants, and hotels. Uh, it's well worth a stop. The next morning after your evening at Cane Garden Bay, you will again feel a little bit thick and foggy, but we're gonna head over to Soper's Hole, which is down and in here. This is a very deep and busy anchorage, too deep to anchor in. This is a mooring ball only situation. Also, you need to remember there's a lot of ferry traffic in here. This is the ferry terminal and customs and immigration, which is also where a lot of the yachties checking in and out of the territory go. Ashore, you'll discover on the northern side of the anchorage, that's on this side, uh, fish and lime, which is open all day and serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You'll also find the Jolly Roger bar. There's a laundry facility there and car rentals available. And on the south side of the harbor, down here, it is the colorful Frenchman's Key Village. Here there's a marina and slips are available with fuel, water, garbage disposal and ice available. All very, very important things. You'll also find a small chandlery and a well-stocked supermarket carrying a large range of pretty much everything you could need and want. Don't forget the kids, both young and old, at the gelato shop, where you can also buy coffee, drinks and sandwiches. Also ashore is Pusser's Landing, offering their brand of Caribbean and American fare, as well as their take on the painkiller, which can be ordered in various strengths from between a number one and a number four, depending on how much your tolerance is built up over the week. They also have a full range of uh, the great Caribbean clothing, and you'll see most of the yachties wearing it. You can also find a complete change of pace with a very cool and popular Italian restaurant called Scaramucci's in the further west towards the boatyard, so down in this sort of area. Don't forget to pop into Sunny Caribbee where you can buy some really nice souvenirs and presents for your friends and family who weren't lucky enough to join you. They sell spices and hot sauces and uh, as well as rather nice artwork. Sopus Hole is going to be pretty much your last stop so this will be probably where I recommend you fuel up. When you fuel up make sure you absolutely brim the tank with fuel and you get a receipt. That's very important. From Sopus Hole you're going to head up the, uh, the shore, the southern shore back to your base. So let's just have a quick look at that. So you'll end up tacking up the Francis Drake channel and going back to your base. In this episode of the BVI Chart Briefing, we've gone from Anagata to Jos van Dijk onto Cane Garden Bay with the last stop before heading home at Soper's Hole. Thanks for watching and if you like it, please give us a thumbs up, leave any comments you have below and please do not forget to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. See you next Thursday when we break down over the next four weeks alternate anchorages and give more details on what to do afloat and ashore.